The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to this learning session. I am Teta Blanche Ayuvia, your mathematics teacher. Let us correct the assignment of the previous lesson. I'll read the question. Given that Z equal to 1 plus I, U equal to 3 plus I, and W equal to Z cubed times U, Express Z cube and W in algebraic form. That was the very first question. Let us have Z. Z equal to one plus I. U equal to root three plus I. So we have been asked to Look for W. We are going to ask to express Z cube and W in algebraic form. The first thing to look for Z cube, you can, there are so many ways you can go about that. You can use, you can use the Pascal triangle to do that. Since you have one plus I or that cube. You can use the Pascal triangle to come out with the result that you can see on the slide. Or you can use the traditional way of opening the multiplying binomial expressions. That is 1 plus i times 1 plus i. You multiply this two first. You have 1 plus 2i plus i squared, which gives 1 plus 2i minus 1. And then eventually again, you multiply by 1 plus i, which give 1 plus i plus 2i plus 2i squared minus 1 minus i. And so you will have 1 plus 3i. i squared is negative. One, so you have three i minus two minus one minus i. We have like terms. Negative two minus two gives negative three. So we have one minus one gives zero, and we have negative three plus two i. I'm not mistaken, to give us negative 2 because we have here, okay, we have 1, these are like terms, negative 1, negative 2, and 1. And so 1 minus 1 gives 0. And so actually what we're left again should be 2. So we have negative 2 plus 2i. If you like, the word I used on the slide there was the Pascal triangle to come out with. And here is the traditional way of multiplying binomial expression by another binomial expression. So W is given as Z cubed times U. So this is what we have. We have obtained our Z cubed to be 
z cube to be negative 2 plus 2i. And so w given as z cube times u, we simply multiply negative 2 plus 2i by u that was given. And u is root 3 plus i. So carrying out that multiplication, we are going to get negative 2 root 3 minus 2i plus negative 2 root 3 minus 2i minus 2i because we have negative 2 times i gives negative 2i plus 2i root 3 plus 2i squared and we note that 2i squared equal to negative 1 and that will give us the result negative 2 root 3 minus 2 plus we collect like terms we have negative 2i and 2i root 3 so you have 2i root 3 minus 2i collecting the factorizing the i we're going to have root 2 root 3 minus 2 all that's in bracket i and that is the simplification of that multiplication so we have the second question two Given that z is 2 root 3 on 3 plus 2i on 3 and w equal to 2 root 3 on 3 minus 2i on 3. Find z plus w and z minus w. What you simply need to do is replace where you see z you replace z by the complex number and w by the complex number that has been given. So carry doing that, we're going to have 2 root 3 on 3 plus 2i on 3 plus 2 root 3 on 3 minus 2i on 3. Now, i is not bother to put in brackets here, but I always advise my students to put brackets because in case there is a negative sign there, that negative sign has to affect everything inside the bracket. But since we don't have a negative sign, since we are adding z plus w, there's no need to bring in brackets. So what we just need to do here is collect like terms. And you can see we have a like term 2 root 3 on 3 and 2 root 3 on 3. And then the other like terms we have is 2i on 3 and negative 2i on 3. So collecting these like terms or taking a, a common, since all of them is a fraction, and all the fractions have a common denominator, so what we'll do is we just add the add and subtract the numerators. So we're going to have 2 root 3 plus 2 root 3 plus 2i minus 2i. The like terms have already been collected. And you see that 2i minus 2i gives 0. And we are left with 4 root 3 on 3. So that is the result for z plus w. Now we look at z minus w. You can see here I have introduced the brackets to show that what we have inside the bracket represents the, the, the complex number w. Without this bracket, you may miss it out. Except that you are too smart enough to, without putting the bracket, you will know that this sign in here has to change because of the sign outside the bracket. And so, carrying out the same simplification, we are going to have 2 root 3 minus 2 root 3 plus 2i plus 2i. And you discover the real part will disappear, and we're going to be left with an imaginary part. And so, what do you discover? We discover that z plus w is a purely real, a pure real complex number, while z minus w is a purely uh, imaginary complex number. Since we don't have the real parts in z minus w, it's imaginary. While z plus w, there is no imaginary part. We continue with lessons under the module plane geometry and solid figures. Remember, we had Lessons under the subtopic circle geometry. 
And actually, we are looking at lessons under the subtopic complex numbers, which will be followed by subtopic vectors. Next will be integration, first order differential equation with separable variables, location of the root of any equation, and finally, we'll end with curve sketching. Now we have lessons under the subtopic complex numbers. We have already seen the lesson complex number system, a brief history of complex numbers. Then we have looked at the imaginary number i and its algebra. And we have also looked at algebra of complex numbers. And actually, we are looking right now at the lesson complex conjugates, which will be followed by properties of complex conjugates. Next will be the complex roots of an equation. Division of complex numbers, equality of complex numbers, the Argon diagram, the modulus and the agreement of the complex numbers. As I said, these are the first 10 uh, lessons under this subtopic because we have 22 of them. And subsequently, we are going to look at the next 12 lessons to be treated. So, as I earlier mentioned, we are Today, looking at complex conjugate. For this lesson, we have as plan, objectives, prerequisite, real life situation, learning activity, recall, application exercise, and the assignment. Looking at the objective, at the end of this lesson, what you should go back home with or you should understand you should be able to describe and define complex conjugate. You should also be able to write complex conjugates and use them appropriately to solve problems. Now, what are you expected to know or to have in order to follow this lesson smoothly? You should be able to carry out mathematical operations such as addition, subtraction, multiplication with complex numbers and form quadratic equations with real roots. Hmm. Let us have some questions to verify the, the prerequisite. Evaluate the following. 4 plus 3i plus negative 6 plus 7i. We are adding two complex numbers. 9 minus 7i minus 3 plus 11i. And C, we are multiplying two complex numbers. So we are just simply repeating what we have done in a previous lesson. So what will be seeming different from what we have not seen recently will be the second question, which says, form a quadratic equation whose roots are 2 and negative 3. So let us look at the first question, which says we should add the complex numbers. 4 plus 3i plus negative 6 plus 7i. So here we simply just collect the like terms. And collecting like terms here, we'll have 4 minus 6 plus 3 minus 7i. Because the 3 carries i and 7 carries i. And so that will give us the result negative 2 plus 10i. Subtracting these two complex numbers, we are going to do the same thing. Collect like term, but taking note that the negative sign in front of the bracket there has to affect every sign inside the bracket. And so doing that, we're going to have 9 minus 3. I hope you understand why it is minus 3. 9 minus 3 plus 7, negative 7 minus 11. The negative 7 here, we have negative 7i and we have positive 11i. But because of the negative sign outside the bracket, the sign of 11i has to change from positive to negative. So we have 9 minus 3 to give 6. And negative 7 minus 11 gives ne negative 18i. Now multiplying the two binomial expressions, whereby we have the variable that is i, we have distributing that. You have 3 times what we have in the second bracket, 5 plus 6i, minus 4i times 
5 plus 6i. And you discover that with the minus sign here, remember that everything inside the bracket will have to change. And so, opening the bracket, we have 15, which is 3 times 5, 15 plus 18i, minus 4 times 5 gives 20i, minus 24i squared. But we know that i squared equal to negative 1. i squared gives us negative 1. And so we know that negative 24 times negative 1 is going to give us positive 24. That is why we have here 15 plus 24. Because this 24 here is this negative 24 here is multiplied by i squared. And i squared equal to negative 1. So we're going to have 18 minus 20, all that times i. And this will give us 39 minus 2i. That was that for addition, subtraction, and multiplication of complex numbers. Now let us look at the second question, which says, form a quadratic equation whose roots are 2 and negative 3. If the roots are 2 and negative 3, to write the quadratic equation with these roots, we know that we simply have to look for the sum of roots and product of roots. Now, what is the sum of roots? Some of the given the roots are 2 and 2 and negative 3. So sum of roots, so you sum the roots. 2 plus negative 3, which is 2 minus 3, equal to negative 1. And the product of roots will simply be 2 times negative 3, which is negative 6. Now, with this sum and product of roots, we have to look for the equation. The equation is given by x squared minus sum of roots times x, that's a linear term, plus the product of roots. We ask the product of roots, and x stands for sum of roots, equal to 0. So, that equation with those roots, 2 and negative 3, will be given as x squared minus the sum of root here is negative 1. So we, what we have is we replace our negative 1x plus product of root is negative 6 equal to 0. And so x squared negative negative gives plus x positive negative gives minus 6 equal to 0. And so that is the equation with roots 2 negative 3. So we move straight forward to the real life situation. And as usual, I'm going to read through the question. And at the end of it, of the, of the lesson, we are going to look at it two together. So I read the question. Mr. Joe is, an, is in a meeting with his staff. And his secretary wants to find out if the number of dreams he bought was enough. He doesn't want the other staff members to understand. Probably he doesn't want the other staff members to know the number of drinks he is proposing to his boss. Then he tells Mr. Joe that, Sir, I have made available 3 plus 2i times 3 minus 2i number of drinks. Are they enough? Now, for Mr. Joe to answer the question, he first needs to know how many drinks his secretary is talking about. So can you help Mr. Joe know the number of dreams? The secretary brought in complex numbers to hide the number of dreams he wants to tell his boss. So the boss needs to know how many dreams is the secretary talking about. So at the end of the lesson, we are going to look at it today. Let us have this activity. Evaluate A, 5 plus 4i times 5 minus 4i. B, negative 3 minus i times negative 3 plus i. C, 2i times negative 3 i. And the last stage says, what do you observe? The first stage, we 
do the normal multiplication of binomial expression by a binomial expression. And so carrying out that operation, we are going to have 25 minus 20i, that's plus 20i plus 16. I hope you understand why we have 16 here. Positive 16, because we have 4i times negative 4i, giving us 16. i squared is negative 1. Negative 1 times negative here gives us positive 16. And so the result there will be 25 plus 16 equal to 41. So you saw that we started by multiplying two complex numbers and we are ending with just a real number. The next multiplication, we distribute negative 3 times the second bracket and negative i times the second bracket. Opening the bracket, we're going to have 9 minus 3i plus, I hope you know why we have plus, minus 3i here, because the sign of 3 here is negative. Negative times positive gives you negative 3i plus 3i because negative times negative gives positive. 3i and then negative i times positive i gives negative i squared and i squared equal to negative 1. Negative i times i equal to negative i squared and i squared equal to negative 1. So negative 1 times negative 1 gives positive 1. That is why we have plus 1 here. And so evaluating that we're going to have 9 Negative 3i plus 3i gives 0. 9 plus 1 is 10. Again, we have multiplied these two, com these two uh, complex numbers and it is giving us a real number. The last one we have, 2i times negative 3i, which gives, we simply just multiply the coefficients. 2 times 3 gives 6 and we have a negative there because positive times negative gives negative. I times I gives I squared, which gives us 6. Now, I will, there is something interesting here. You see that negative 3 minus I is being multiplied by another complex number, which is just similar to what we have here. But the difference now that is there, that, that sign negative is positive. If you take, took note, the, the previous example that we did was the same thing. The difference there was just the signs. And when you observe also, the last one here, you have a complex number which is with a, with a positive sign, and the next one there is negative. So what do we observe? What is the observation after carrying out all that? You discover that an imaginary number multiplied by an imaginary number gives a real number. Then multiplying two same complex numbers whose imaginary parts are of opposite sign results to a real number. Just what I was explaining here, you see that these complex numbers are same, but just for the fact that the imaginary part has opposite signs. So when you take any complex number and multiply it by the same thing but the imaginary part being having the opposite sign, you will always come out with a real number. So let us recall what we have learned so far. A complex number z equal to x plus i y has conjugates. We need write it as z star or you can write it as z bar. Any of this simply means the conjugate of z. What is the meaning of conjugate of z? The conjugate of z just simply mean, means that you change the sign of the imaginary part of z. As z has been given to be x plus i y, it means the conjugate of this z, you simply just change this, meaning this, this positive sign to negative. And so this will be the conjugate of the complex number z. And vice versa, this is the conjugate of this, the same as this is the conjugate of that. A complex conjugate 
is formed by changing the sign between two terms in a complex number, just what I've explained. The product of a pair of complex conjugate is always a real number from the activity that we did. If a complex number is a root of a polynomial equation, then its complex conjugate is a root as well. Like for example, you see, if you have a quadratic, you say quadratic uh, equation, x squared plus b, x plus c equals to zero. Let us say that the root of this quadratic equation is a plus br. Let's say this is the root of this quadratic equation. Therefore, the, con the conjugate of this complex number will also be one of its roots, meaning that well, this is a root, then a minus b and will also be a root of the quadratic equation. Let us look at the application exercise. The first question, you know that z equal to 3 minus 2i and u equal to negative 1 plus z equal to 3 minus 2i and u equal to negative 1 plus 4i. Find z star and u star. z star, we simply say what? We change just the sign. 3 plus 2i. That would be z star, the conjugate of z. And u star, we simply change. Please, we are changing the sign of the real part, not the sign of the imaginary part. The sign of the imaginary part, not the sign of the real part. So this negative one here is maintained. Then we are changing but the sign, the sign for them. And so that is what we have. U star and Z star. Those are the conjugates. Now the next question is, form quadratic equations with real coefficients in each case if the following roots are given. Very good question. We have them. A. 3 plus 2i and b negative 4i. Now, we have been asked to form a quadratic equation that has roots this. Remember the prerequisite where we had roots 2 and negative 3. We have to form the quadratic equation with roots 2, negative 3 by looking for sum of roots, product of roots. But now we have been given just one root, and we say we need to look for the quadratic equation. But we need two roots, right? And in our resume, we saw that given the complex number as a root of the quadratic equation, it means its conjugate will be also another root of that quadratic equation. And so that idea will help us a lot by saying that 3 plus 2i and 3 minus 2i will be the root of the quadratic equation we are looking for. And so, having this idea, we can now look for the sum of roots of this two. Sum of roots, which will be 3 plus 2i plus 3 minus 4i. It should be 3 minus 2i, not 3 minus 4i, because we are taking just the conjugate. So this 2 does not have to change. So it should be 3 minus 2i, not 4i. 3 minus 2i. Which will give us 6. Why 6? Because we know that when you are multiplying a complex number by its conjugate, it gives you a real number. So multiplying that will give, give us 6, carrying out the operation or multiplication. Then, product of roots, we are going to multiply 3 plus 2i times 3 minus 2i to give us 13. Now, with this sum of roots and product of roots, we now apply in the formula x squared minus 6x plus 13 equal to 0. So that is the equation that has roots, one of its roots to be 3 plus 2i. Now, what about the equation that has one of its roots to be negative 4i? If negative 4i is one of its roots, it means the conjugate of negative 4i 
will be another root. So what will be the conjugate of negative four i? We we'll simply just change the sign from, from negative to positive. So we have the roots negative four i and four i. So sum of roots will give us negative four i plus four i, which gives zero. And negative four i times four i gives sixteen. This simply tells us that we are going to obtain a quadratic equation that has no linear term. And so the linear term there is zero. So we have z squared plus 16 equal to zero. So that is the quadratic equation with roots, with one of its roots, negative 4i. Let's recall the real life situation. So we say Mr. Joe is in a meeting with his staff. And then the secretary comes in and wants to ask him the number that is the number of drinks he has made available for the meeting. But he doesn't want the other members to be aware of the number he wants to mention to Mr. Joe. Now, I guess as much that this secretary knows that Mr. Joe masters complex numbers very well. That is why he had to bring in the idea of multiplying two complex numbers that will give him the exact number of drinks he has made available. So he says 3 plus 2i times 3 minus 2i are the number of drinks he has made available. Now, for Mr. Joe to be able to tell this his secretary if the number of drinks he has made available are enough, he needs to know how many drinks is the secretary talking about. So what the, the, the Mr. Joe needs to do, he simply needs to multiply those two complex numbers. And multiplying the two complex numbers, you discover that what? The secretary had made available 13 drinks. So with this number, Mr. Leo, Mr. Joe can say if the drinks are enough or they are not enough, depending on the number of staff he has in his meeting. We come to the end of this lesson with our assignments. Given that z equal to 5 plus i, u equal to root 3 minus 6i, find z star and u star. Number two, given that z Given that root 3 minus 2i is a root of a quadratic equation with real roots, form the quadratic equation. 3. Given that z equal to a plus bi, find z times z star, where z star is the conjugate of z. So we're going to do the correction in our next lesson, which will be titled Properties of Complex Conjugates. On a tege si, ma tege yop. On a tege minga, ma tege nyom. On a tege majang, ma tege ndom. Mane tambia ninya ne injubia yen. Ngani bana, ma tege mot. Ngani la kiri wa tege ndong. Eswe kina bia jinkido. Mane tambia ninya ne injubia yen. Tam tama mote tam zabike. Tam tam a tonge tam zabike tam 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 a mote tam zabike mane tam bia ninya ne injo bia yen.